years you've learned filth and garbage. Take all that, throw it in the garbage. Did any of you get married? Yeah, we're married. You're married? Yeah. Me and him are married. Me and her are married. Huh? This is a boy. Yeah, I'm a boy. I'm a man. I'm a man. Thank you, Lisa. I'm a man, bro. You said, nah, not because the world is pushing feminism on the man. I'm a straight dude. All right, all right. All right. All right. Well, guess what? I think it's nine or ten. I'm going to show you something. Give me five for him that hated himself first. I'm going to show you something real quick. Read that. Sirach 14 verse 5. Ecclesiasticus chapter 14 verse 5. This, this is next again. He that is evil to himself, to whom will he be good? So God starts off by addressing up a man or woman, right? Now God is saying, this is one of the things how destroyed we are. God says if you're evil to yourself, you cannot do good to anybody. Right. Why? Because you can't even deal with yourself right. Right. Because the other law is love your neighbor as yourself. So if you can't even deal with yourself right, how the hell can you learn to deal with somebody else right? We get out. What happens is we're so deceived, we think we can be hateful to ourselves but do good to others. We're destroyed. You follow it, right? You follow it, right? Read it again. He that is evil to himself, to whom will he be good? He shall not take pleasure in his goods. And God says, those people that hate themselves, they're not going to have pleasure in nothing. Why? Because they hate themselves. There's nothing, there's nothing they can do to satisfy them. Why? Because they hate themselves. Right. Society has conditioned us to be that way. We don't appreciate nothing. You understand what I'm saying? Read. Verse 9. Let me finish the first question. Let me get that next. Because we follow all questions, all right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Read. Verse 9. A covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion. So now God goes into a covetous man or woman. He says his eye is not satisfied with what he had. Whether that's the dress code that God set up. Think about it. For a man to become a homosexual, what does he have to do? He got to go and be the woman. No, I want to be a woman. Okay, she wears makeup, she wears dresses and skirts, brought and pants, and they start putting it on, right? So he starts putting that on, right? To act like that because he couldn't be a woman. Right. That's covetous. He doesn't want to be what God created him to be. A man, he says, no, I want to be a woman. Because what we don't understand is your spirit is what you are. If your spirit is a man, that's what you are. That's why God put you in a manly vessel. But what happens is corruption comes into you by what? Predominantly, the men or women are molested or raped. Something happened young that jacks them up. Right. That's the root of it because once upon a time it was a mental disorder. They knew you were checked, somebody messed with you. Right. They raped you, molested you, whatever, and now you got confused. You're like, oh, maybe I like this thing. But no, they broke you. That's why God calls that rape murder. He said, whoever does that to a soul, you kill that soul, so your judgment is death. You following? Read it again. A covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion. Murderer. God sees rape is murder because you killed that spirit. That's how God sees that thing. You understand what I'm saying? So judgment always comes to them eventually. Nobody escapes anything. You understand? God says that is murder. All right, read that. A covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion. And the iniquity of the wicked drieth up his soul. The iniquity, sin, when you keep sinning, God says you drive your soul, so now your soul will be so corrupted where you're dead. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because John 63, I want to show you something. And we're going to answer the next question, right? It's your spirit that's alive. Your flesh is just a vessel to holy spirit. Because when you die, guess what? Your soul is immortal. It goes back up to God, your flesh decays, go back into the ground. Because when the soul is left, you see the, when you go to funerals, it's just the, the, the fleshy vessel is there. Right. There's no life in it. Why? Because the life, the soul left it. You understand? Read that. John chapter 6, verse 63. Listen good, my brother and sister. It is the spirit that quickened it. Listen good. God says it's your spirit that's alive. Read. The flesh profiteth nothing. God says he's the God of spirit. Your flesh profiteth. In fact, your flesh is your biggest fight. Right. Because your flesh, your soul don't need food, water, none of that. Your fleshly vessel does to contain the soul. It needs the food. It needs clothing. It needs uh, layers in the wintertime. It needs less layers in the summertime. You understand what I'm saying? Your flesh don't need none of these things. You follow me? The only reason we sleep is because what? Our flesh get tired. So it got to rest. You understand what I'm saying? But the soul don't need rest. It's our weekly body does. You follow me, right? Read. 
The words that I speak unto you. The words of this Bible, what are they? They are spirit. They are spirit. And they are life. So this is the spirit of Christ that's discerning your spirit right now. And he's going to see if you're of God or you're not of God. You follow me, right? Give me James 4.17. Uh, 4 and 10. Uh, 1 John 3 and 10. Check this out. Now, you're going to ask me your next question, right? Now, check this out. The problem is now, there are spirits that hate the word of God. They're so rebellious. So, they follow the ways of this world, men, or they follow the evilness of their heart, which is their mind. Right? Read that. 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. So, here's how we know if... A man or woman is a child of the devil or a child of God. Let's see how. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Whoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. So let's show them what righteousness is. Let's find out what is righteousness. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness. It shall be our righteousness. If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God. What is righteousness if we observe what? To do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he commanded us. So when you're keeping the commandments of God, you are a child of God. Right. right. If you don't keep the righteousness of God, you are a child of the devil. My sister, did you hear that before? She turned her head. What? Because she doesn't want to hear from God. But well, God, well, the words of God can't be played. Read words of God again. The words of God is plain. If you don't want to keep the commandments of God, you're of the devil. Is that plain? Right. Right. You're a child of the devil. Right. Read that. First John chapter 3 verse 10. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. So whosoever does not keep these commandments is not of God. Right. You're a child of the devil. Meaning, you're a child of a deceiver. You're right. deceived as well. That's all devil mean, a deceiver. You know what I'm saying? So, now I'm going to show you why God created woman. Is it 418? Is it 418 or 5? I forget. 514 or 418? That's a great question. The question was asked why are we so disliked? The same reason Christ was disliked right. and all the prophets of old. Right. Because they, our people hate correction. Right. They despise God and despise the laws of God. Right. That's why. Because that's right. we come out here in love to correct your brother and sister that's love. Because we're trying to save you from death. Not only the first death, but immortality of pain and suffering. Right. But people don't understand. God is going to kill you by nuclear fire on this side of the world. Then he's going to revive you. And you're going to be immortal, feeling lake of fire after your judge. Meaning your body's not going to uh, melt or whatever in fire. You're going to be immortal in that state of fire with the pain forever. Right? Read that. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 14. That's not that what God created the woman to be. Until up. Satan came and deceived them and said, no, you were born this way. You can be a, a dog, a cat, a pony, a man, a woman. You can be whatever you want. And God made you that way. God never made us that way. Right. It's our own lust is what led us to those lifestyles. But it's not hateful for me to correct y'all. Right? We gotta because if I'm a thief and a killer, the homosexual said to the to the to the to the rapist, yo, bro, don't talk about me. I ain't gonna talk about what you do. And guess what? Sin has become increased over the whole community. Right. right? Because nobody's judging anymore. Read that. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 14. I will therefore that the younger women marry. God created you to do what? That the younger women marry. When you became a marriage age was 20, your father was supposed to keep you preserved at home. Your virginity was supposed to be intact. Your husband, the father, is supposed to protect the daughter. Right. But what happens is society has given our daughters too much liberty. They're out in the street all hours of the night. Guess what? Then men are seducing them and having sex with them and abusing their bodies. Some of them being raped. So the men are not doing their job because of what? The fathers are busy doing that. The mothers are busy doing that. You follow me? But read that again. I will therefore that the younger women marry. Marriage is honorable in society. The only time your daughter was supposed to leave your house was the authority supposed to be passed from the dad to the husband. Right. right. Same respect a daughter has for her father, that's what goes to her husband. Right. Read. Bear children. So the first thing was to bear. You have children? Yes. What about yourself? Yes. yes. How many? One. I have one, but I had two. I had two. I have two. I have two. But one died. I have two, but one died. Read that. I will bear for that the younger women marry. Did any of you get married? Yeah, we're married. 
You're married? Yeah. Me and him are married. Me and her are married. This is a boy. Huh? This is a boy. Yeah, I'm a boy. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man. Like I'm a oh, man, bro. Nah. Yeah, I thought I was a girl. Nah, because the world is pushing feminism oh, nah, over the man. I'm a, so, a straight dude. All right, all right. All right. All right. Well, well I guess got, what? I got a job. Guess, all right, I just want to make sure because, yeah, listen, that's nah, what I got a job. All right. All right. I got a, yeah. All right, read, read, read. I want to know. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 14. I will, therefore, that the younger women marry, bear children, Guide the house. Here what God says. So, sister, the first thing was supposed to be married. Yeah. That was that was before our time, though. Our no, children it's were not. No, what happens? We're so destroyed. We, this is our heritage. We forgot that. Right. Wait, the can you yourself? I'm sorry. You said it was first to what? Read it again. I will therefore that the younger women marry, their children guide the house. Because the, the the culture that was destroyed from us in slavery was Hebrews 13. Give me Hebrews 13. And 4. Bring it out. This is our custom. You wouldn't find boyfriend and girlfriends in our community, our nation. It was not something that we allowed. In Africa. No. Listen. Listen. We were not just in Africa. The native Indians and the Latinos here are our people. They're the Israelites too. Right, right. And here was the same thing. You want to find boyfriend and girlfriend in our culture. The Europeans came and destroyed us, and we started acting like them. Right. right. All that you see here is the result of us following the other nations. Read. Hebrews chapter 13. How did they get to Mexico when the Mayans came? Right? Check this out. Check this out. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But wedmongers and adulterers, Yo, listen, God man. will judge. Check this out. Check this out. Read it again. Marriage is honorable in all. So marriage is honorable in all, right? And the bed undefiled. And the bed is undefiled, meaning what a husband and wife do amongst themselves married. Right. Read. Right. As long as they include the husband and the wife. Right. Not the sister over here, the brother over here, the animal, the dog, the cat, none of that. What y'all two do together, God says that bed is holy. Right. Because marriage, that's what the stipulation for marriage was, it's sex. Pleasures. You see what I'm saying? That comes with marriage. Right. Read. And the bed undefiled. And the bed is undefiled, but what? But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Our community is for whoremongers and adulterers. Why? What's, what is a whoremonger? A man that sleeps around with many women. Oh. And the same, the difference, and the female one is adulterous. It's the same thing. Oh, right? Yeah. So the, an adulterous is a female, and a whoremonger. Right. Is a, that or, sleeps wait, around. What's the word whoremonger? Right. You learn something new. Right. Wait, so, what's the so the adultery. Whoremonger. Whoremonger is a man that roams around. Right. And right. Adulterous. That, I'm not so, an but adulterer also goes into marriage. So, a man that steps out of his wife, right. from his wife, and likewise, adulterer is a woman that steps out from her husband. Right. But the point is, unmaritable sex. That's what that means, right? Right. right. So the point is now how? But God says He will judge whoremongers. Read that part again. And but, a, yeah. but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So how does God judge whoremongers and adulterers? How? Ever heard of STDs? Yes. That's the judgment. But our people are so sick. They're, they're, they're HIV, STD positive, and instead of stopping and, and saying, you know, God's judgment is they're burning, they said, I'm going to keep, out of hatred, I'm going to keep sleeping around. That's how much we hate ourselves, that now the, the STD rate is just skyrocketing more and more and more. High. High. So the point is, God says he will judge them, but guess what? How did our community become full of hormones? Give me that in Deuteronomy 23. No. I'm going to show you something because of the daughters of the nation of Israel, which is the so-called Blacks, Latinos, and Indians, we didn't have this horror, this spirit, this horror spirit. Read right. That. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17. Bring it out. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. Notice, it didn't say no, God didn't say no whores of all nations. It was the children of Israel because we are girl freedom. What is she going to do? She's gonna slip around. Right. Look, I'm saying, I thought are half naked out here. Right. And they got dudes fresh out of jail, right. pedophiles, all that. She could get raped. But I would just tell you, yo, don't come out the house like that. Right. Right. Don't put on some damn clothes. Right. You understand? So, the point is, my brother, dress code. That's your wife. You can't have out there, bro. That's for you. Right. right. Because think about it. If you're not around, and a man see her walking like that, you think they ain't gonna try her? They will. They will. So your job is to say, yo, cover yourself. Give me that to me. Give it out. 
We're gonna show you because guess what? You wonder why there's whore mongering or adultery going on in our community because what? My woman, I know my woman is secure in her situation though. Nah, right? brother, you see you listen. Give me this verse and let's get the give me the characters of the mind, bro. God is telling you about us. You know, you know how many brothers say, yo, my wife is securing me. Bro, the greatest liars are women. Even the scriptures tell you that. Right. Their game is smoother than honey. Right. They can talk. Men think they got game. No, women got game. Right. They don't slip around shit you, you will never know. Right. Raising a kid that's not even young. Baby, even come out looking like you. That's my child. So Lori says, you are not the fuck. Bring it up. Read that. Mm. First Timothy, yeah, man. chapter 2, verse 9. The measuring stick to see if she's really a down girl, bro, is if you keep the commandments that she's following you keeping the commandments. That's, that's right. That's the measuring stick to see that's right. what a good woman is. Because God says only a good woman will keep the commandments. That's only right. a faithful man and woman will keep the commandments, right? right. You understand what I'm saying? The ones that don't, they're of the devil. Right. I follow my rules, though, but I understand what you say. I got you. Read she shouldn't wear that, but she still. Bro, that's the test that you got to try her on. Copy. You're saying that, right? Copy. Read that. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So we're going into good example of what a godly woman should do. Right. Because a daughter of the devil is going to do the opposite. Right? Read that. With shamefacedness and sobriety. So a godly woman, daughter, a godly woman will adorn themselves in modest clothing. Right. Dresses and skirt not showing their shape. Right. But a daughter of the devil, she's going to wear the opposite of that. Did you finish that? Yeah. Read it. Not with braided hair or gold or pearls or cross. This is the same with the video fixing. Right. It's all tight, oh, revealing right. all the nice makeup, jewelry on. That's what the whorish woman, the daughter of the devils, do, right? right. Keeping that in the proper. Yeah. I'm going to show you. God characterized, he characterized every type of woman. So, my brother, the more you familiarize, familiarize yourself with God's definition of people, you're going to be good. Right. You're going to be able to spot a good woman from a mile away. Now, she could potentially be a good woman if you mold her. She has some good characteristics, but she's not a good woman according to God. Right. Likewise, you're not a godly man until you conform to what God says. Right. You might have some good characteristics, but, bro, over time. One that knows and keeps the commandments. Yes. I don't know none of them. That's what we are here to teach you. That's the point. We're going to bring out some to you. You understand know what I'm saying? Right now, we're just giving the characteristics of a, a godly woman and a whorish woman. A daughter of the devil and a daughter of God. I want to be a godly man. I ain't worried about uh, all Chris, we're going to bring that out. No, well, you know, you got to know how, both sides because that way you can compare. Right. But what if I don't even. How are you going to know if you're a godly man if you have to compare it to? But I might not be worried about the woman. I might just be a holy man. That's cool. That's, I like that. You can start with stuff. I like that. Get this thing again, Proverbs 8 and 4. I like how you said that. Because it does start with you, my brother. Changing the community starts with the man. Right. right. The men got to get in order, and then likewise, we got to get the woman in order. Right. You see what I'm saying? Read that. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10. No. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. So he's going to give you the characteristics of a woman of the devil. Read that. And settle of heart. Read it from the top. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. One of the characteristics of, of a, a, a daughter of the devil is whorish clothing. Right. Women that are dressing tight fitted clothes showing off their shape. Right. That's a whorish mentality because a whore is a prostitute. Right. They sell their bodies for money, so they gotta they gotta promote their body by what? Showing skin tight stuff so they can show it to their next potential customer. Right. But God says, the characteristics of a whorish woman is what, read? Sister, we're reading the Bible. You're making that face because you've never heard the Bible before. Read it, That's sister. That's right. right. She is All loud right. and stubborn. So God says she has whorish clothing on, and then also she is loud, and she does not listen to anything. You can't tell her nothing. Right. Can you hit up some tea for me? Shut up. Ha, ha. She's loud, stubborn. So look at the women today. They're half naked, and they have crappy attitudes. They're loud. And they're rebellious as all hell. That's what God is saying. Right. So you trying to be a godly man, you run from women like this. Run from them. When you see them, that's what I said. 99% of them are already half naked. How can you marry somebody like that? Right. Some of these just come by here with no bras on. Nipple rings in your face. Like, hey, how you doing? I got a question. About God? Like, yo, just take the flyer, man. Just, just take right. the flyer. Go over there and just listen. Like this. There's no shame anymore. Because the land fell into hoarder. Read that. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her so house. You gotta look out for these characteristics. Dressing like a whore, loud, rebellious, and she never wants to be at home. Bring it she up. always wants to be on the street. Look around you. All these women out here on the streets. 
guarantee their home is dirty. Right. The kids are hungry. Right. Their husband hungry. Right. But where they at? In the street, looking good. Carnal things. They look good. The house is dirty. Anybody else is dirty, but they look good. That's backwards. Read. That's it. That's it. That's it. So now, Proverbs 8 and 4, because you said you focus on being a godly man. All praise. And then let's get what a godly man is. I think it's in Sirach 38. Continue with a godly man. Get that for me next. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 4. Unto you, O men, I call. Who does God call? Unto you, O men, I call. God calls men. Right. You were always the leaders that he set up around the world. Read. And my voice is to the sons of men. This Bible is to the voice of men because we are the rightful leader of our nation. Right. It starts with us. Right. We get in order. We get our women in order. Guess right. what? Now we're reintroducing, reintroducing, reintroducing marriage back to the community. Right. God's Sabbath, Pentecost, Tabernacle. God have I only days that we don't even celebrate. But we say we follow God. We follow the holidays of the devil, but yet we say we we're the children of God. That makes no sense. Give me that. You got it? It's a rock. Continue with a godly man. 37 and 12. 37 and 12. Yep. Now check this out. You want to be a godly man? This is what God says a godly man will do. Ecclesiasticus chapter 37 verse 12 But be continually with a godly man So God says the woman that's supposed to be set in order Is supposed to be continued with a godly man The reason why there's so much spousal violence Is because these sisters are not with godly men right. They were niggas Beating them up, abusing them You know what I'm saying? That's the difference, read Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord What is the characteristics of a godly man? Read it again whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. God says a godly man is one who you know is keeping the commandments. Right. That's who you know is a godly man. Read. Whose mind is according to thy mind. Your mind is according to the God's mind because these are God's instructions. Right. If you follow it to the teeth, you will be the wisest man on earth. That's right. Our nation will once again be set up high and be wise if we keep the wisdom of God. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.